Hello, it's the next part of robot dog development. So just a couple of clarifications. I've been working on Open Dog back into last year, and that is still an ongoing project, which I'm gonna be picking up again soon. At the moment, I'm working on some other test rigs, and one of those is here, which we've started in the last couple of videos, and that is just really a fork from robot dog development with a slightly different test chassis to test out some things to help me make Open Dog work better. So Open Dog has rigid actuators, which makes it very hard to make it dynamic. And what I'm doing with these dogs is that they have back drivable gearboxes and a simulated spring where the motor is held in place by holding current on a brushless motor with an O-Drive robotics motor driver and an encoder to try and hold its position. But the gear ratio is much lower and that allows me to back drive it and basically makes a virtual spring. And I'm experimenting with the stability and compliance of those joints because these dogs are much more forgiving to get working and they seem to come up and be running much quicker and with much more convincing results. And then hopefully I can take what I've learned from that and try and put that back into Open Dog or completely redesign it. We don't really know what's going to happen yet. So this test rig is pretty lightweight. A lot of the parts are 3D printed, so they're plastic. There is some aluminium extrusion and an aluminium plate in each leg where the motor is mounted. But apart from that, it's 3D printed. And this one has much more power than the previous one due to this massive gear ratio. So it can support its own weight without being held up on bungees. In the last actual video, I made these feet for the dog, which are so far missing, it's only got stumpy legs. And these feet are 3D printed with dual extruders. So inside we have a rigid piece and on the outside we have a flexible piece. And by varying the combination of those materials, we can give it different properties. I left a wedge cut out of this part here and spaced them out a magnet and a Hall effect sensor so we can measure the distance and measure the bend in this whole piece. I've installed the feet and those are bolted through with three bolts through to the 3D printer of the leg, which was made on the Moore extruder, so it's really heavy duty. And we can see actually that we can compress that and the dog's got quite a lot of mass, so we should be able to get quite a good difference between the two halves and measure when the feet are on the floor and when they hit the floor. So my feet are installed. I've only done one other thing to it, which is to install these green blocks, which are slightly longer than the previous ones that hold the legs. And that just tips the whole leg back slightly and puts its balancing point in roughly the right place so that it's not always tipping backwards and forwards. So it's standing on its feet okay, it's a bit like having suspension because obviously those motors can back drive and the current's trying to hold them in place with the encoders so it's a bit like a spring even though there's actually no springs in the system at all apart from the slightly flexible feet. So let's give that some steps and see what happens. So I'm just using fixed timers to do the steps to fix positions at fixed times. So you can see even though it's starting to keel over to one side, the legs are quite forgiving because they're quite spongy. So I'm trying to push it back there and trying to get it to center again. And um, you can see in fact that the dog is quite unstable because if I go too far, the legs are spongy and it falls over. Let's just try that again. So I thought I'd speed up the legs to make them go quicker, but that made it worse. And then I slowed them right down, and that makes a lot of sense that it makes it more stable because it gives that virtual suspension more time to recover in between each step and not get upset by a constant sort of motion building up and building up the inertia building up with side to side swing and making the instability worse. I'm pretty happy with that as a test rig and we can see it's quite forgiving when the feet hit the ground because they're slightly springy due to just the holding current trying to hold those motors in position by allowing them to be back driven. So there's no actual springs but we still get that spring effect and that means the legs comply slightly with the ground already. However, we can see mechanically, of course, it's not inherently stable. It wants to fall over and there's not enough power on one side perhaps to hold it and it keels over and falls over completely. So we need to do something to affect that stability. Now we could just affect the timing, so if it starts to fall over, it takes longer steps or bigger gaps between the steps, like when we slow the timing down, which would allow it to stabilize in the middle. But that's cheating really, so I've got another method of doing that, which we did in the previous test rig. 
So on that dog, the joints were back drivable as well. And what we actually did was looked at the position they were being back driven to and used a controller to then try and move the motor partly to that position. So I looked at the difference between where it was supposed to be and where it actually was and moved it, say, 50% of the way. And that made the legs very compliant and much softer, essentially. So what I'm going to do is actually measure the tip of this dog with an inertial measurement unit and then make one side of the dog more compliant or one quarter of it more compliant towards the corners with each leg essentially to try and balance it out that way and I think we'll only need to put a tiny value on that controller just to sink one side of the dog down and we should be to make it stable. I've now fitted an MPU 6050 inertial measurement unit which is linked with the I2C bus to the Team C3.1 that I'm running here and you'll notice the O drives are now absent. And that's because I had some issues with the huge high power three phase wires that seem to be affecting the I squared C bus wires, which are of course unshielded. So I've just moved the O drives to each end of the dog and that seems to make the data more reliable. All I'm doing now is taking the roll axis out of that IMU and using that to soften up compliance on the two legs on one side of the dog or the other side, depending on which side of zero it tips. And that's pretty much it. And you should check out the previous video where I explained how this works with a PID controller to find out the full details of how compliance works. So here we go, we're now using the inertial measurement unit to decide which side of the dog we should soften up, and that seems to keep it pretty much in the middle. Now one leg on the left is making a bit of a funny sound eventually, and it still seems to have a tendency to fall over to the left. But nonetheless, it's much more stable than it was before, and we're still using the leg timing, which is 500 milliseconds between steps. So I can push that round much more than I could before, and it should dynamically soften up the other side that's rising, and that should keep it stable. At some point the legs don't have enough power though, which is why it falls over. So here we go again, let's just give that another test and see what happens again. You can see it's sort of falling over to the left a bit. I think that may be a mechanical issue, and I'm not sure. But it's still carrying on much further than it did before we put the inertial measurement unit in and any sense of stability. So I thought I'd move the inertial measurement unit data and just add a little value to that so it's actually biased towards leaning to the right. So I've just got my roll variable and added about a number of three on it. So I've added three degrees to it. So it should actually lean towards the right slightly more. And that seems to be pretty good. I don't know if you can actually see it leaning over. It might be just about in the middle here, but that's looking pretty good. And you can see it kind of leaning either way as it takes steps. And that's much, much more stable than it was. Just move the boxes out of the way. It's still got a bit of a bias to the left actually looking at it, which um, I'm not sure why that is. I do think one leg is slightly weaker than it should be on the left hand side for some reason. So here I've added some more value to that roll variable, so now it should lean over to the right even more, and you can probably see that it's doing so, and it's actually falling over to the right more than the left, which shows that the inertial measurement unit and the stability and the compliance of the legs is working, because I can actually make it fall over either way. Trying to get that value right in the middle is going to be pretty tricky, but um, this is much more stable than it ever was before, and we've still got that same leg timing we had right at the beginning until they lose power and it can't support its weight anymore. So I probably need to reset that inertial measurement unit again. It's worth noting that the legs are only just strong enough to support its weight, and that's why when it falls over too far on one side and the legs get squashed, they haven't got enough power to push it back, and it falls over. But it does mean we can see whether it's truly stable. So I'm pretty happy that seems to be working, even though the dog still falls over in every test pretty much. We can decide which way it falls over by varying that inertial measurement unit data just by fudging the numbers. So it thinks it's falling over one way or the other, and of course that makes it comply more on the other side and therefore it falls that way. So it looks like the stability and the compliance is working as I expected with the previous test dogs, and we just need to get that number right so that it knows which way the actual middle is. And you can see the dog is inherently unstable. It's not like it's got six legs and it's always gonna balance on three, or it's very bottom heavy with really wide legs. Of course, its legs are quite close together, its feet are quite close together, and they're slightly flexible, and then it's got a really big top on with the batteries balanced on top. So it's inherently unstable, and we can see when it does balance, that means the stability control must be working. So the next thing to do is have a look at some foot sensors, so hopefully it can deal with some form of uneven terrain.
So I fitted a Hall effect sensor to this 3D printer, and it's the little device at the bottom, and that will sense how far away a magnet is and give me an analog voltage. Now I'm using shielded cable on this, because we've got quite a lot of high currents and voltages spinning around with those three phase motors, so hopefully that'll be okay. So that sensor is gonna mount just there on the ankle, and of course that's adjacent to a magnet that's now fitted into a rigid part of that print in the hybrid print I made so I can glue it into something. So then we can measure the distance between the magnet and the Hall effect sensor, and as the foot flexes, that should tell us the distance between the magnet and the sensor, and we can see when there's pressure on the foot. So now I'm gonna take the analog value from that Hall effect sensor and threshold it to just a one or a zero when the foot is on the ground or it's not. And having the analog sensor in the first place and the analog value means that I can decide when there's enough pressure that the foot is definitely on the ground. I could have, of course, used a micro switch with a mechanical foot, but then it will be very hard to actually decide how much pressure is being applied before it says it's on the ground, and this way I can tune it. So all I really want is, is the foot on the ground or not? And when it is, we're gonna stop the foot in its current position. We're constantly reading the position of the leg by its encoder, and that's constantly getting read on every loop anyway. So all we're gonna do is say, when you put your foot on the ground, that value is now your target instead of the value you were going to. And that should make the leg comply with any object that's put underneath it. So I've just set up one foot to do that before I do all of them, and I'm just gonna try and block that with my hand to see if I can feel if it's complying, and it seems like it is. And it's getting much softer when I put my hand under and that virtual switch gets pressed. At least it goes past the threshold. The other thing is I'm actually tipping it slightly and it's not on its stand straight, so we do have that natural compliance as well, and the inertial measurement unit compliance softening up that side if it tips the other way. But that seems to be working, so let's put it on the floor and see what it does. So I tried to tune up the values of both the foot pressure sensor threshold and the compliance and the inertial measurement unit values, but basically it gave very similar results. I looked more closely at that foot pressure sensor threshold and it would appear the actual analog value coming out of it is changing as time goes on. Even if the dog is just sat there on its feet, it would appear that the 3D print is bending more and more and more and the gap is getting closer and closer. And as it smashes into the ground, that makes it even worse. And I can tell this because if I put it back on the stand and leave it, the value moves in the other direction. And of course that's no good to set a threshold because essentially it's a constant moving target. And so what happens eventually is the foot switch thinks it's always pressed and that leg goes really spongy and tries to comply with nothing essentially, which is why it's always falling over into that quarter of the dog on that side. On top of that, the other side then softens up load, so it doesn't take very big steps, and that starts to collapse. And ultimately, we don't have quite enough power to push everything back, even if we could once the legs have bent past a certain point. So despite what I said earlier, I think I may have been better off just with a mechanical switch, like a micro switch that's either on or off, and having a mechanical joint in here um, and the switch in there just so when it presses the ground it presses the switch basically and have a spring that pushes the mechanical joint back so when it's off the ground it definitely pushes the switch back and pushes the foot back and that'd be a much better way to sense whether it's on the ground or not yep and thanks to everyone who's about to suggest load cells are a good idea they probably are a good idea but i think i'd still have an actual physical switch so we know the foot is definitely on the ground then we measure a load cell on the ground rather than getting any spurious results while the legs are in the air so i've learned quite a lot by looking at these springy dogs with their back drivable compliant joints that compliance we put on top with the inertial measurement unit and having some fun with foot sense but as I've said before in the series, I'm actually looking forward to going back to Open Dog with its rigid joints because it's quite a lot more predictable. And I think what we're going to do is take those rigid joints and work out how we can simulate the compliance and some spring in them. One thing I've learned from the springy dogs is they'd be really good if I had much more power, so I could make them really rigid if I wanted and really spongy if I wanted. And I guess the only way to make them really rigid is with massively overpowered motors or actually an actuator like a ball screw that can't be back driven very easily. So the next thing I'm gonna do on Open Dog is look at a good foot design that may include a load cell or something that will give me some sort of pressure sensor, but it'll also know when it's on the ground with a switch. 
and then take it from there and see if we can get some sponginess, or at least we could turn up the motion fill to that first order filter we've got on there that smooths out all the motions so the legs don't hit the ground quite so hard when they need to comply. I did something very similar with Robot X, the bipedal robot, which resulted in it actually locomoting on two legs dynamically, even though it wasn't a great walking robot, it was about five foot tall, and I was pretty happy with the results. And the way I did that was to use the inertial measurement unit to imagine what would happen with a human. If you try to push a human over and they want to keep their feet in the same place, then generally if you're going to be pushed over sideways, you try and bend one leg and absorb the load by moving your hips sideways. And if you're being pushed front to back, then you'll kind of do the same thing by bending your legs and trying to dampen the motion by using that inertial measurement unit to drive its waist joint. So that was pretty successful and it did have totally rigid actuators driven by lead screws. So I'm hoping that I can do the same thing with OpenDog, maybe not with just the inertial measurement unit since it's got four feet and that means it's going to be quite stable on the ground and not tip very much anyway, but also with foot sensors if I can build a good analog foot sensor we can try and put some of that compliance in. So that's all for this video, don't forget you can subscribe for more updates on dog development which will be OpenDog in the future and lots of other projects. Just a quick ad for my Patreon, don't forget you can support me at patreon.com slash xrobots. And if you don't like Patreon, then have a look in the link below for the join button for YouTube channel membership. Also have a t-shirt store where you can get these attractive t-shirts with various drawings on of things that I've made. Alright, that's all for now.